Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're watching from. Uh, this evening, Worcester time. Uh, I believe we're, all of our panelists are in Worcester, myself included. I'll let them correct me if I'm wrong in just a moment. Um, but we're going to wait just a couple of seconds while we have some of our, uh, well, all of you attendees coming in. Um, we have a great group here on a Friday night. We're super excited to have people join us on a Friday. Uh, and I think that's a you know, really good, good thing. So um, thank you all in advance. Um, I see our numbers ticking up, which is a good sign. Um, I'm going to introduce myself first because I, I'm the one who's not, not as interesting here as, as my uh, three panelists. So uh, my name is Nick Porcella. I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions at Clark. And I've been at Clark for about 10 years. I did get two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's, and I've been in the admissions office for the past five years. And I guess for that time, I've been a proud Worcester resident for those 10 years, um, which is really the theme of presentation tonight. Life in Worcester, uh, you know, the neighborhood, uh, Worcester, Clark, all the great things. We do have uh, three panelists with us tonight, uh, and I'm going to let them all introduce themselves briefly before we dive right in. Um, the session tonight will be about 40 minutes, and we're going to spend about 20, 25 minutes of that uh, talking about life in Worcester in the neighborhood, and then we'll uh, get, get right to a question and answer segment. We wanna hear from all of you. Um, so that's enough of me. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, my three panelists to say a quick hello before we dive in. So Jack, take it away. Thank Thank you, Nick, and uh, thank you everybody for being here on a Friday night, giving up your time. I'm Jack Foley, and as it says, Vice President of Government and Community Affairs at Clark. Um, I have been at Clark since 1976, so it's been uh, a quite a long trek for me at the university, and I've had the privilege of being Clark's point person for its work in the community. It's really nationally recognized work in the neighborhood since 1985 or so. Um, my family has deep roots in the city and in this neighborhood, and um, I am heavily involved in the community in a variety of different ways. I, I am also a 22-year elected member of the Worcester School Board, so I know the local politics. And for the past year, I've had the privilege of also being Clark, uh, leading Clark's effort to bring students back to campus and to have a, a community that is kept safe and healthy all throughout this year. So I've had an interesting experience during the pandemic time. Thank you, glad to be here tonight with you. Thanks, Jack. Alvaro? Hi, everybody. My name is Alvaro. I'm a senior here at Clark, actually graduating like in a month, which is super, super exciting. Um, I'm a geography major in minoring in economics and with a concentration in GIS, so geographic informatic science and a lot of digital map making to make it a little easier. And then um, as you can see, I work here for the um, for for admissions, but I also worked for the main South CDC as um, first as a proctor as a secretary, but also I work a lot like working in housing strategies and development. So I've been very like connected to the community as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you, and Sylvia. Hi everyone, my name is Sobia. I am a psychology major I'm with a management minor, super excited about that. Um, I'm from East Hartford, Connecticut, so only an hour is away. Um, and besides working in missions, some other really cool things that I do is I work in campus life as an office assistant. So that um, kind of suite is residential life and housing, events planning, and a lot of club stuff. I also am a resident advisor in Dodd, so you know, community questions are okay. And then I also did ACE which is a pre-summer orientation for first generation and or students of color. And I've done a lot of oddball jobs around Clark. So I know a lot. <laughs> Thank you all. And so we're gonna dive right into it. I'm gonna turn it back over to Jack and uh, I'll, I'll just add the comment that uh, Jack's been presenting with us for, for quite a number of those years he's been at Clark. And, and we just, we absolutely love uh, all the work he's done for the community and, and as well for our office. So. Um, I, I saw this event on the calendar several months ago and, and really wanted to claim this one because it, it's always fun to work with Jack. Uh, and we really had to fight over who was going to moderate this. One. So, um, Jack, I'm going to turn it over to you to really dive in and spend some time talking about uh, Worcester, um, you know, the, the, the recognition that, that the neighborhood has gotten uh, and all things Clark and Worcester. So turn it back to you. Great. Thank you, Nick. It's great, great to be here. And I know that we all wish we could be here in person, uh, be together in person. It's a lot more fun to. Uh, talk about the city we love and the neighborhood that we've grown to love and our, our great campus here at Clark and really sharing our stories with you. But this is the next best thing. Glad to do it virtually. What you should know, first of all, most importantly, 
is how to pronounce the name of the city. It's not Worcester. It's not Worcester. It's Worcester. It's Worcester. So if you're going to come here, you've got to get that right. You've got to keep practicing that. And what you should know about Worcester is that it evolved from being a major manufacturing center in the 20th century. It was really the largest manufacturing center not on um, open water, but went through that typical decline that cities went through in the 60s, 70s, and the 80s, but has now rebounded in its new renaissance that we talk about here in the city of Worcester. Um, to be a real destination now for young professionals and a place that is attracting uh, people to come live and to work in the city of Worcester. Um, as you can see here on the slide, it's gaining national recognition. Recognition of Worcester as being one of the, one of the you know, growing cities and an attractive destination. Um, Worcester was also ranked eighth by Bloomberg recently as being the eighth uh, strongest city in the country for coming out of the pandemic. A new kind of a ranking, but really that Worcester is poised very well given what it has it's gone through over the past 10 to 15 years in its development to really hit the ground running once we are eventually post pandemic. But people don't realize that Worcester is the second largest city in New England. And it's larger than Providence, Springfield and Hartford. Um, but it really acts in many ways like a small town. Uh, Clark is very well recognized in the city for the work it does in Maine South, but the work it does across the city. And you will find Clark alumni working in the corporate sector in the city of Worcester and throughout the city's government as well in, in, in all of its offices there. And Clark is highly regarded in the city for the work we're doing. One of the things that has really driven Worcester's renaissance is the presence of the Eds and the Meds. And you see that across this country, that's what's happening. Um, coming out of manufacturing decline, now with the, the kind of professional development you're seeing from the real strong educational institutions with eight colleges and universities in Worcester, and the strong medical and biotechnological research and facilities that we have here in the city, that has been really driving this kind of destination for professionals coming to the city, working here and living here. Um, it is one of the strongest real estate markets in the country. It's a real challenge trying to buy a home in Worcester right now. And Worcester is also very highly rated by Forbes and other magazines for its strong cultural and leisure activities in the city. Um, one of the best mid-sized um, art museums in the Western Hemisphere, the Worcester Art Museum, as well as Hanover Theater, which is a, um, a wonderfully renovated 1920s uh, movie theater. Uh, and, and performance hall that has been renovated and is now a great center for, um, for concerts, for lectures, for Broadway plays right in downtown and the part of the city. And what we're seeing downtown is new development. We're seeing new development of restaurants and craft beer uh, and, and unique sites for food. Uh, we're seeing more than 1,400 housing units being built downtown. You're seeing that kind of growth of downtown and now the retail that is growing around the housing that has been built and now being inhabited. And I wouldn't end without talking about the Woo Sox. I'd have to, the AAA farm team for the Boston Red Sox located this year to Worcester. Uh, May 11th is opening day here in Worcester of the Woo Sox. And they came because they saw what was happening here in the city and the strong development that was going on here. And, and what we are seeing is that Clark alums, our Clark graduates are finding jobs in the city and they're finding places to live in the city and staying here and really making this their home. And that is a great sign that Worcester is an attractive destination for young people. Nick, if you can flex to the next, to the next slide, it'd be great. Um, what you should know is that Clark has been at the forefront of partnering with its community since the mid 1980s. And those of us who have lived through the 1980s recognize that cities were not always popular destinations. Cities were actually falling apart in the 80s. And Clark, along with Yale and uh, University of Pennsylvania and, and a few other schools, really were at the forefront of this work of really partnering with its community and partnering and being recognized not just for the successful outcomes, but for the approach that Clark took to this partnership looking at sharing governance and sharing power 
and engaging in community-based strategic planning. And that is very different for urban institutions such as universities and hospitals. But Clark has really been, it's been at the forefront of this work and really saying this is really the essence of our partnership is this shared governance, shared decision-making. And we really call it an alignment of enlightened self-interest. And the self-interest that is Clark's for the neighborhood to be strong, but it's also in yours if you live in the neighborhood. And it's your, it's your self-interest, you have a business here. So it's really bringing those groups together, creating that comprehensive strategic plan that you really need to have, and then working it through together. We have had five different strategic plans now since 1987 developed in partnership with our neighbors and our community. And we have had great success. And some of the outcomes that you see listed here show that success. Tremendous housing opportunities for families with uh, new and renovated housing and opportunities for first time home buyers to own their own homes and to build equity, to build wealth by having their home. Uh, we also worked with our neighbors in the Maine South Community Development Corporation on the Kilby Garden Hammond project just adjacent to the campus, about 30 acres of primarily abandoned property, um, housing and factories, and have come out of that with more than 110 new units of housing, including some lovely renovated homes, uh, a new $9 million Boys and Girls Club, and an athletic field that Clark, uh, we paid $3 million for our athletic field, but we share it with the Boys and Girls Club, and we share it with the local high schools as well. Um, one of the real aspects of our partnership is around education part of our mission, obviously, and we think it's important in the neighborhood. And what has really benefited the community is we've said to our neighbors that if you live in our neighborhood, you'll have the best educational opportunities in the country. And our students are partnering with the local public schools, as are our departments, such as education department. The students are working in those schools as master's students, uh, working full-time in those schools. Most of the uh, teachers at one of the local high schools are Clark alumni working in those schools as well. High school students are eligible to take dual enrollment classes at Clark, tuition free for college credit. And if you live in the neighborhood and you have lived here for at least five years consecutively and you apply for Clark for admission, you go to Clark tuition free. And we have had more than 117 students since 1995 take advantage of that opportunity and come to Clark tuition free. But what it does, it creates a real partnership in the neighborhood, a real connection to the families, to the students who've come to Clark and graduated and stayed in the neighborhood and worked, and for their siblings who are coming on and going to Clark or going to the schools in the neighborhood as well. It's really created a tremendous sense of partnership and community here in the neighborhood. And over the time, the partnership has really changed Clark. It's really changed the way that we view our neighbors and our community and how we view ourselves and what our role is here in the neighborhood. And we think the way that we've embraced this partnership really shows the values of the institution and that real commitment and that sense of shared uh, benefits in the neighborhood, but also shared governments in the community. And as students, it really provides you the opportunity to engage in transformational service to the community we can change the lives of the families and the students that you work with in the neighborhood, while at the same time, possibly setting a different career path for you, but also changing your life because you're working and making a difference for working with these families and working with these students in the neighborhood. So i um, love to answer your questions and I'll turn to my colleagues in the panel. Thank you, Jack, and uh, absolutely. We'd love to hear the, the student perspective as well. And um, I'm just gonna go with who I see first, which right now is Toby. And, and I'd love for you to just take a few minutes to sort of share you know, your experience you know, with life in Worcester. Um, and that can be pretty broad, um, you know, social life here, um, your community involvement and more. Take it away. Yeah, so I have both an academic and a social perspective. I'll start with the academic. Um, and just like a little bit more Clark focused. So I'm a management minor and we obviously have to take management 100, you know, 101, 100 classes. Um, but I was lucky enough within my management 100 class to partner with a fantastic organization that I had actually gotten to know through a leadership program at Clark, um, a different one than ACE. Um, it was like just this six week leadership program. Um, and they were super fantastic. They were also coincidentally named ACE, but theirs stands for African Community Education. And they um, deal with 
um, the children of refugees around, um, you know, just Clark and just their area in general. They're super great. They provide a lot of after school um, care for students where they can just go and do their homework, get some technology use, as well as um, they do English second language classes and overall just some fun activities for kids to go to. And I got to do a project with them before I got this job where we brought um, a couple of their um, program participants onto Clark's campus. We gave them a tour around campus um, and we also gave them some free food. And the point of that was just to show that college is accept accessible um, and we answered a lot of their questions coming from students who also similarly looked like them too because we um, one of my partners was Kenyan and that was super great to give them exposure and see that college is accessible for everyone um, and it can be so that was a really great opportunity and I'm super happy I got to work with them and then in terms of social because I have a bit more experience with this because I am a big foodie I love restaurants a lot more than pandemic because now it's you know it, it wasn't really safe to go but um, I'm super happy because one of my favorite 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 restaurants ever um, that I love it's my personal date spot I will drop hundreds at this place um you don't have to but that's just me <laughs> um but it's called armsby abbey and it's um like they have beer they have wine i'm not legal so i i just stick with the cheese um but it's a super great place they just opened up days ago and i'm so excited to go they have this incredible mac and cheese that is made with all of the the cheeses in the restaurant they just dip all of like you know like the scraps in the sauce and it's just it's just incredible um I really love going there. It's super great, a great place to go if you're just hungry, you want some mac and cheese, a really good staple. Um, I've also, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an outdoors person. I like to get tan and walk and just experience nature. So I've been to a lot of the hiking spots and parks around Worcester, which are super great. University Park is a super good one. And that's just basically our Clark's backyard. That's that's just a part of Clark, even though it technically isn't, but it is. Um, there's also M, M Park, which is super fun. And there's a little hiking trail across from that. And that's just, just like a, maybe like a 10 minute walk, 20 minute walk from Clark, which is super fun. Um, and overall, I feel like I've had a pretty positive experience walking around Clark and just being on Clark's campus and, and off in Worcester. I think one, memory that always sticks with me from my first year at Clark was I was just I, I had a little red bike I got called little red riding hood quite a bit um, and I happened to see my friends playing basketball at um, you know university parks like we have a couple of courts and just as I pull up some local um, residents asked my friends to play basketball and they said sure why not so it was really fun to um, I got to play with their their children so just me and some, you know, just, I was cartwheeling them. I, they were like cartwheel and I was like, okay, I will. <laughs> so that was really fun. And then the resident noticed that my bike had a flat tire. He went to his car, got a pump and pumped my tire for me. He was like, oh, I got you. And that was just a really great experience, a really positive experience um, just with a local resident. And that just shows the type of relationship that Clark has um, with people. It's good. <laughs> That's not as eloquent, but I think concise is sometimes good to get a point across. And, and I can definitely echo Sylvia's statement. People around here are really nice, which I think is a bonus. Is you're in a city, and and people are really really nice, and and they're willing to help. So well said, um, Alvaro. I'll turn it to you too. You know, you're a senior now, and, and have had you know uh, four years to sort of live in Worcester, reflect on the city. Same questions to you. Uh, what can you share about life in Worcester from your experience in social life, academics, community service, and more? Sure. So. Um... It's funny because my actually my journey with Worcester started like a while ago because when I was like 12 years old, 13 years old, I came and I lived here for a year. So I went one year in one of the middle schools here in Worcester in Forest Grove. And then I moved back to Ecuador and then I came back and took a gap year right before starting college. So if we make the map, probably I lived in Worcester like six years by now. And I think it has been really nice to kind of like experience it in different stages of my life because I experienced as a, just like a 12 year old when I was going to middle school. And then I feel like all my academic and kind of like all my jobs actually had happened here uh, and a little bit in Boston. So it's been a really interesting, interesting career. And um, so it's starting kind of like with like the, I guess like work um, kind of experiences that I have. It's funny because University Park or Crystal Park, the park that is right across the street, that was actually one of my first jobs. I was a steward over the summer before start, starting on my freshman year at college. So I used to spend every single of my mornings there cutting the cutting the grass, like cleaning the tree, picking up the trash. And most of the time I will be playing with the kids because there's a program called um, that it runs on the summer that is run by the Division of Youth Opportunities. 
and you basically have like these um, youth workers working on every single park of the city and recruiting students and just having like an open day like camp for our students. I often will play that. And actually this last semester, I was a site coordinator for that program and I was working directly with the community. So I was actually like running programs and I liked a lot of like youth working and stuff. So it was just very fun to me. And I feel like that was kind of like a different experience because I study geography and I'm often on the computer like doing maps and things like this. And I think that one of my passions that it has come from all this time of living here in Worcester, it's, it's learning to like like you um, liking youth work. Um, because I, I met the Division of Youth Opportunities through like me starting working on as a steward in the park and then I started hanging out with them and that kind of like all of that developed. So it's been a really fun, fun experience in that way. And then I think academically, it's it's been kind of like that, a stepping stone where you, where I had so many opportunities as I've been studying in my career that it kind of like gave me the idea because now I'm thinking of becoming an urban planner. And I don't think I will be here thinking about that if it wasn't for something that I mentioned at the start. So I worked for the main South CDC. Um, and I was doing a lot of like public like housing work uh, with section eight, especially for like families that were having a hard time at finding houses and like looking for places to live. And I think that connecting all of the kind of like lectures that I learned about like human geography and kind of like thinking of like, what is the best way to like have a city and what is like uh, an accessible city for people and how does that look like? I think it connected all of those things. And it was just like an, an easy way to to kind of like set myself of what I see myself doing in the future. Um, so it's been really nice. And then socially, I think that Sophia kind of like summarizes all the stuff that I also like to do a lot. Um, I think one of the extra places that I will encourage everybody to visit all the time is Coast Pond. It's the other way opposite from University Park. If you go towards Park Avenue, you'll see that there's like two big, big um, like streets that kind of like go around Clark. So one is Main Street and the other one will be Park Avenue. So if you ever come here and you follow Park Avenue, you're going to see a little like shop of bicycles there. And then you just have to go down that road and then you'll um, get to Coast Pond. That used to be the place that I always used to go running um, when I used to be fit back in the day. And so it was always like fun to go there and, and just like spend a little bit of time looking at the water. There's also a really nice playground where a lot of families go and play. So it's just a really like one of like my favorite spots right now, Wooster. Thank you all. Yeah, there's a lot of nice spots in the city. And uh, you know, it's one of those goals for a lot of students to see as many as possible while you're here. So uh, if you couldn't guess by now, we actually are now in the Q&A question and answer segment. And uh, we're going to take your questions. Uh, we've got a wealth of, of knowledge and information to share. Um, I guess just a couple quick announcements while we're waiting for those to come in. Um, please use the Q&A feature. It's just me back here moderating, so it's easier for me to see them all in one place. Um, so please use the Q&A feature and send us anything about Ulster. We're happy to take those questions. Um, in general, you can also email us at admissions at clarku.edu with any question, um, Worcester or not. Uh, and, and that's true for today, tomorrow, the next day, et cetera. Uh, and of course, remember, uh, for those who haven't already deposited, our deposit deadline's coming up eight days, May 1st. So be sure to send that in. Uh, we're excited to welcome you to Worcester and to our Clark community. So let's get those questions in the Q&A. Um, we've got a lot to talk about uh, with Worcester and a lot to share. Um, I also know it can take a moment to type in the very uh, deep thought provoking questions. So we will await those. Um, but while we are waiting the first one to pop in, anyone, uh, Jack, do you have any? Uh, I'll just, I'll just um, pop on a little bit to what was said yeah. by Sylvia and Alvaro. It, it, the research and the engaged scholarship is also a critical part. They both <clears throat> mentioned it a little bit in their, in their comments, but but we have faculty who, um, as part of the classroom work, uh, have students go out into the community and work with organizations and really experience uh, you know, what it's like to work in an organization or work for the city or work for other, other entities that are out there and really gain knowledge about the city that can develop into internships for you and to, can develop into career pathways. And I, I know dozens and dozens of Clark students who have volunteered at the Maine South Community Development Corporation, as Alvaro did, and, and found themselves in a career path that they, they want to go into housing development or community development or work with families in some way. And it really has, you know, they didn't come to Clark with that expectation, but it has developed into that as well. But I, we have nationally recognized faculty doing research with the community, not on the community, but in partnership with the community and having students working out there in the community. So 
there are many different ways. There are three different parts of, you know, there are community partnerships that the university has, the, the CDC and the Boys and Girls Club and other entities. There's engaged scholarship through faculty and your coursework. You can get involved in the community that way or through student service and uh, uh, community service and student volunteerism, you can get involved in the city as well. And, and I will say that Worcester is really the second largest city, but is actually a small town in many ways, and that you will get to know people. I think Armsby is a great spot. They are just opening up and everyone's waiting for that as well. And um, with Alvaro, I, you know, his, his relatives have cut my hair and I work with them at the CDC. And so it's, it really is a community that we've built over time and people know each other and really work closely with each other in the neighborhood. Well said. And uh, we did have some, some questions come in, which is really great because um, now we get to answer some things. Um, the first one I'll, I'll give in general, anyone wants to take it. And I, I have some information too, if anyone wants. Uh, but uh, we had somebody ask about, are there opportunities for horticultural, uh, horticulture, farming or gardening in Worcester or at Clark? Albro. So, I was going to share, um, I guess the probably like the easiest answer is there's going to be clubs on campus that probably are going to guide you. We have our garden, uh, community garden that is within Clark, um, what's something that we call President's Field, and then you can see it. Um, and it's starting to like bloom and grow. So I think that will be kind of like the first place that you can look at. But I also was going to share like um, there's this thing that Clark owns called the Arboretum, and it's probably like a 15 minute walk from here. I'm actually TAing a class for one of the professors and the class is urban forestry. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of work in there. And at, if you kind of like go there and you go up the hill, you'll see these big, beautiful like parcels that are open for community members to go and actually like take advantage of, especially during the summer. Um, the person that is right now, it's, it's managing it's from the REC, so the Regional Environmental Council. But then you have access to all the different tools and things that you might need just by talking with either Professor Rogan, who is the person that is overseeing what's going on on the Arboretum, or to any like community members, because most of the people will actually leave the tools there so you can just use them whenever you're trying to like get a plot. And then it's super easy to just get like really like good there from around the area. So everything is kind of like setting there. The only problem that you might find is getting water, but luckily the hospital that is right next to it um, <laughs> just allows us to like, go get water. It's just the carrying, it's probably gonna be a workout. But yeah, those will be, I guess, my, my two um, information that I have. And, and Nick, I'll just jump on that a little bit that you know, Professor Rogan has done a tremendous job up there and really galvanized an effort to look at the Arboretum. And it's a wonderful natural resource that we share with the community and people walk through there. Um, but this work started with Professor Rogan and Professor Martin doing some groundbreaking work on the Asian longhorn beetle. And then if you know the Worcester history in the past 10 years, Worcester was uh, infested with an Asian longhorn beetle, which came in and unfortunately there's no way of getting rid of this, of the beetle that kills trees. So you have to cut the trees down. And so Worcester cut down 30,000 trees in its neighborhoods. But we also came together and replanted 35,000 trees. So, but uh, Professor Rogan and Professor Martin were doing some great research on the impact on the climate with the loss of these trees. And then he has continued his work and it's a great opportunity for students, but also the Regional Environmental Council does you grow. They run urban gardens throughout the neighborhood, throughout the community uh, for a lot of the high school students to learn how to, um, how to work in gardens. And they have a lot of college students working with them and uh, two Clark students run regional environment. So two Clark alumni run the Regional Environmental Council. They also have an excellent farmer's market that should be starting up relatively soon. I, I can really recommend it. Uh, next question uh, that came in, um, uh, maybe I'll post to our uh, couple students first, but um, how would a student find out about volunteer opportunities while you're on campus? I'll answer. Um, so yeah, we actually have um, an office on campus community um, outreach volunteering. They're a great resource to go to. I know that we also have um, a couple of different platforms, anything from Handshake or even just a quick, um, it's called Handshake, the platform, or even just a quick Google on, um, search online. Like I said, you will get opportunities where you are actually interacting with organizations within your classes. And that's like a super great opportunity. Um, and even just the people you're living around in buildings. I know a lot of people that live in my building, Dodd, um, 
are super involved on campus. That's like a really big thing about Clark. All the Clarkies do all the things. So you will you will find people that have many hats, like both me and Alvaro. So a lot of people I live near actually really inspire me to go out into my community and make a difference, volunteer, get out there, get my hands dirty in like grass or something. So yeah, it's it's definitely like a wide range of both professional offices who can provide you specific support, whether that be by major or by interest, or even like just your local Clarky trying to table and get you to come to their event that's um, involved with, a, <laughs> with an organization and they'll hand you a juice box. So yeah, we also do have a couple of clubs that specifically work with organizations. I'm blanking on, the ac on what the acronym stands for, but I know RAP works with refugees in Worcester. I mean, they, do a, they, they have a really close tie. I think that's like the acronym of the actual organization too. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of opportunities um, to learn about them. And uh, if anyone was with me for a session I read a few weeks ago on uh, problems of practice courses at Clark, that's also a, sometimes a way you can really get involved in, in the community uh, is there's a lot of classes where you'll be out working with the community on projects, big questions, and it's a really fun way to, to sort of work at maybe at Coast Pond or, or work at the local restaurant museum or work with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, there's a lot of really great classes at Clark that you could also get involved in and do volunteering for. Uh, I think the uh, if anyone has more to add, feel free. Otherwise, I can go to the next one. I was just gonna add that we all often have like a like we have like our club. Uh, what is it? Open. I don't. I don't know how. To, I'm blinking today too. But basically, we have a day that we have like an open house, basically, and you have all a lot of organizations from Worcester coming in and offering job opportunities, volunteering opportunities, interning opportunities. Actually, that that's how I met admissions. And that's how I applied for my first job in admissions because there was one day that they were like tabling and talking about this new position as an AOR. But that is kind of the case with also organizations from Worcester in general. So you probably see the city of Worcester, you will see the REC, you'll see the Minnesota CDC, and they will be looking for students that are just interesting on going and learning something new and just starting a career with them. Yeah, picking up on that, we're, we're hopeful to have a our near normal year next year. And that would mean that organizations could come onto campus, as Alvaro mentioned. And in Tilton Hall, there are dozens and dozens of organizations that line up in there and students will go through and they'll take a look. It's like almost like a buffet. They'll take a look and they'll decide where they might like to volunteer and which organization they might want to get involved uh, with as well. So, um, and we're also completing, actually, it's, I have a couple of students right now doing a complete inventory of a lot of Clark's engagement in the community. And so we're looking at a way um, this, summer and the fall to be publishing this so that people can see where all that engagement may be, whether it's scholarship and research or whether it's student volunteerism. Thank you all. Uh, Sylvia, I'm actually gonna give you the next question because you mentioned living in Dodd Hall and we had a question about what is it like living in Dodd Hall? Can you share about that experience? Yeah, I know it's not directly related to Worcester, but it's still a really good question. And I think you can completely tie it in because like I mentioned in my previous question, who you live around really can dictate who you're friends with and like your involvement on campus. Dodd is great. It's our only female, fully female identifying building. That's also mixed class. Um, it's a really great resident hall. There are no elevators. So if you need an elevator, I wouldn't recommend this building. But besides that, it has a really great basement. That's pretty, um, you, it's pretty, it's a good social place. Alvaro has been in there. I've, I've said hello to Alvaro a couple of times in my build. Thing. Um, and like I said, it's super nice to live around people, not only my age, but also older, because um, I'm a junior and I'm applying for fifth year. So it's nice to get a lot of great resources on what are cool organizations and also how do I do this? Please help me. You're an upperclassman. You know what to do. So that's super exciting. Um, and yeah, I think Dodd's also great if you like, um, there's like a little park a very small park right near it on Downing Street. That's a good photo op place if you're looking for a little swing moment. Um, but besides that, <laughs> living in Dodd is, it's, it is, it's good. It's not too bad. Um, it's on a cor it's on the corner of campus. So it's a really quick walk. If you know to, need to go to like Big Y or CVS or a fan favorite Yo Way, which is a boba and crepe shop. So if you're interested in crepe, Yo Way is where it's at. Please tell me they still do uh, frozen yogurt too or no? Oh yeah, they do boba frozen yogurt. They actually okay. just updated their menu. Again, I'm a foodie and I love, I love sweets. They actually just updated their menu to add this like waffle thing. I know so specific, but like, it looks good. 
I'm, I haven't been to Yale in a while, so I'm glad to know they haven't stopped serving the uh, frozen yogurt. Um, I had a couple of students uh, with raised hands. I'm not tech savvy enough to know what to do with that, but um, if anyone has uh, questions, um, you can just put them in the Q&A um, and we're happy to answer them live here. So throw those questions in the Q&A uh, and we'll, we'll get those uh, you know, answered by our, by our amazing three panelists. So um, for, for now, we don't have any more at the moment. We do have a few more minutes, got about five minutes left. Um, so we're happy to take a couple of questions, um, but any, any uh, panelists have any more to add while we're waiting for that? Maybe next question to come in. Oh, I do. Alvaro, put your hand down. <laughs> um, really quick, now I'll let Alvaro speak. Um, there's also something really cool called the Palladium, which is a concert venue. And I went to go to go see an EDM concert, which for those of you who don't know, it's the boom, boom, boom kind of music. And it was super fun. The artist was Rez, if you're interested in EDM. I mean, it was a really great experience to not only see local Worcester residents come and have a really good time. Um, Pre-pandemic, mind you, because it was packed, <laughs> um, but it was um, that is something that we also offer in Worcester. So hopefully, after COVID, we'll get a lot of really cool artists coming in, and you can go see them. And again, it's like a it's a quick Uber or like a twenty to thirty minute walk. So super close to a really great um, pop in venue. Alvaro, you had your hand up too. Yeah, I mine is not as cool as Sobia's comment. Mine was gonna be pretty nerdy. Uh, but I was going to follow up with uh, what Jack was saying, but he mentioned the Human Environmental Regional Observatory, and that was actually what I did this summer, and it was actually the opportunity how I created my thesis. So it's just kind of also to like mention that, that, you know, like my thesis has been pretty local and all my cohort is actually directly working with the city of Worcester to go through something that is, that is the program of greening um, uh, gateway cities. And so it's kind of like creating like a better way and like more sustainable plans for the cities itself and also trying to like look and create a better environment for the community in general. So it's also just like a really good resource to keep in mind too. Whenever you're like looking to do research and things like that, I think that like if you do it locally, it's even going to be more easier and more fun because you can get access to data and not only that, but you're going to actually see the results that you're trying to like write in a paper and you're actually going to see what is the impact of it. So I will just keep that in mind as, as you know, you're looking at like colleges, but also as you're going through your college career. And uh, one thing I should mention before we get to uh, another question that came in is um, something no one's mentioned yet is the value of uh, the consortium in Worcester and that Jack touched on, there are you know eight or nine other colleges in, in Worcester and, and even more beyond in the region. And students as part of the higher educational consortium of central Massachusetts, can take classes at those schools after your first year. So really great way to enrich yourself with more languages, more sciences, more you know social sciences, arts. Um, really, really awesome resource. You can use their libraries, you can go to their events. So it sort of opens up that in total in Worcester, there's I think 38,000 college students. Really great you know tool when you're when you're in the city. We had a few more questions come in. Um, this next one um, is specifically for Sobia and Alvaro. Um, so for students, when you came to Clark, what was your biggest adjustment and did anything surprise you? It was so long ago. <laughs> um, I would say I think the free time aspect was um, really interesting because you're going from a very structured, you know, like 8, 39 to 2 to, you know, 5, however, your whatever your class like your high school was um to having a lot of free time but it's not necessarily free time it's unscheduled time and it was um, a bit difficult um to kind of work around a good balance of being too busy and not busy it's so i think so we might have frozen for a second alvaro you want to pick up that that idea yeah, i I guess I'll answer it in my way and then I'll let Sylvia finish it up. But I guess for me, everything was kind of like a like a big change because as I mentioned, I took a gap year and so I was kind of like getting adjusted to living in the United States itself. Um, but then kind of like adding that, the cultural piece of just adjusting to it and then adding academics to it, I feel for me was like, um, uh, if you see my grades on freshman year, you'll basically see how the transition went from here and then you can kind of like see the curve picking up. Um, I definitely feel like academically was the biggest challenge for me. Um, I feel like just adjusting to like see how you learn on the on the classroom, kind of like understanding how to like take notes from the professors, understanding that you have to feel comfortable in asking questions in lectures or going to office hours. 
I feel like all of that was a little bit harder for me. I feel like socially, other than the cultural piece of just like living in a different country and being uh, surrounded by a lot of like international and students with different backgrounds, for me it was actually easier to kind of like navigate that. I feel like because I moved a lot when I was younger, it was super simple for me to like kind of just like make friends and kind of like go into like a dorm and make a different type of food and go out to like do something like that. So I definitely see like, I've seen students like struggle different things, but for me, the main thing was academically. Yeah, thanks Alvaro. And uh, I think Sylvie's uh, texting me, she's having some technical issues, but she's trying to join back in in our last couple of minutes. So uh, we'll um, keep going with our two remaining questions, which is probably what we'll have time for tonight. Uh, but again, if you have more questions that we don't have time to answer or, or just in general, you can always email us at admissions at clarku.edu. Um, there's Sylvia. Sylvia's back. Do, do, uh, Alvaro answered uh, the part, uh, his part, but uh, do you want to finish off yours? Connected to audio. There we go. Can you hear us? Sorry, I think I had a moment. Um, sorry, oh, I missed good. that. Alvaro answered, so you can finish off your thought about adjusting to Worcester and Clark. Just free time and seek out help from both office hours and your peers. Upperclassmen are a great resource. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So a couple more questions. I'll uh, I'll actually take the next one because I have some experience uh, in yesteryear. Um, you know, not as grandiose as it sounds, but somebody asked, uh, do students play any gigs? Uh, around campus and in Worcester, and, and they really do. Um, this is one thing that's really great is there's several houses in the neighborhood that actually have like studios um, because I think Clarkies really love music. Um, so you can you know get really involved in the indie and, and alternative music scene. Um, Sylvia and Alvaro mentioned uh, areas like the Palladium. Um, you know, they will have uh, groups open. Um, you know, they'll bring in Clark groups or, or whatnot. So yes, very much so. Um, Alvaro and Sylvia, anything to add from your experience? There's an admissions ambassador who actually has signed with a local studio. His name's Logan, super great. So there is a music scene um, around Worcester and there's quite a bit because I think his is more punk to screamo kind of vibe. So we have it in Worcester if you if you want it. <laughs> we do, it's well said. And I will just say usually on the green, uh, which is kind of like our main area, you will see a lot of like your students coming up and usually like events like spree day or things like that, you'll often see somebody um, kind of just like having a, a concert there. So it's always fun and easy to like see it. Yeah. And uh, we've got time for one more question. I'm gonna throw this one to Jack, um, which is about snow, which is a really great question. And can you talk about how the campus itself and the city of Worcester handles snow and snow removal? Well, first of all, it never really snows in Worcester. It ne never gets below 55 degrees. It's beautiful all the time. Um, we're quite used to handling snow. Um, on campus, we've got a full team that works 24-7 when it's in the, in the, the snow time, and they, they clear the pathways, and they clear the, uh, the, the parking lot very, very well. It's, you know, I guess it, we are very experienced at doing that. The city, the city does a great job with clearing snow. Um, what I would say it's more difficult, more of a challenge in our neighborhood because of the density of the, of the homes and all the cars that are parked in the street. So they will do a good job, but they'll also ask people to clear their cars and not park in the street. There is a parking ban so that they can clear the snow and, and get rid of it. But, but overall, the city does a, a fine job given the fact that we are one of the snowiest cities in the country. I can attest personally, I, I've been living in an apartment in Worcester for the last five years and uh, they, they do an excellent job, the city, and, and they're also very nice. Um, so it's, it's good to meet the DPW folks here. Um, again, going back to the theme that the people in Worcester, everyone is super nice. It's a small um, town. It, yeah, and that's the good thing about it. So uh, we are out of time. Um, and I think that's good because we're actually out of questions too. So perfect timing. I really want to thank my three panelists for being here as well as all of you, our audience, our admitted students and families. Congratulations again. Really excited to welcome you to our community and to Worcester. Uh, and remember, deposit deadlines May 1st if you haven't done so already. Reach out to us if you have more questions. And really, thank you all so much. And uh, I hope everybody has a good night. Take care. Thank you, Nick. Everybody, be well.